I know that the cruise industry hasn't had a great year, rightly or wrongly, the cruise industry's reputation has been damaged by the COVID outbreak. It's been a really long time though since I've seen my family and I wanted something to look forward to. I wanted a chance to make those really good memories that you can only make on a cruise, so I have booked a cruise. I had a look into all of the COVID safety regulations on a lot of cruise lines and this is what I found out. Coming in at number five, we've got Norwegian Cruise Line. They're one of the biggest cruise lines in the world with a whopping 9% cruise market share. They've got 16 ships which range from smaller ones from the late 1990s all the way up to huge mega ships with go-karts, laser tag, you name it, you'll find it on a Norwegian ship. Cruises with Norwegian are all about flexibility. There's no set dining times. There's no formal dress codes. You eat when you're hungry, you wear what you want. And my first cruise was with Norwegian Cruise Line. When it came to me deciding on a cruise line, Norwegian had to be one of my choices. I don't think that if you want to go on a cruise, you have to be a fan of formal nights and dress codes. If you don't want to do any of that, there's plenty of cruise lines that don't involve any of that traditional cruising stuff, and Norwegian Cruise Line are a really good example of that. When it comes to COVID safety, Norwegian Cruise Line have actually formed a healthy sail panel with Royal Caribbean, and it sets out everything that the two companies are going to do when it comes to COVID safety. I have no doubt that taking a cruise with Norwegian Cruise Line will be safer than me visiting a bar or a restaurant on land. They have thought about everything. They've thought all the way down to kind of air filters within the air conditioning to stop any pathogens from spreading between different cabins in different public areas. The filters that Norwegian Cruise Line have put into the air conditioning actually kill 99.95% of pathogens. And I don't think you can ask for much more than that. I think that's pretty good. Taking a cruise with Norwegian, you're still gonna be able to do everything that you love. You're still gonna be able to see the amazing Broadway style shows. You're still gonna be able to eat all of the amazing food and explore all of the areas on the ship, but things are gonna be slightly different. They're gonna have staggered embarkation, online check-in. You're gonna to have to social distance anywhere on the ship where you can. And if you can't social distance, you're gonna to have to wear a mask. There's gonna be temperature scans as you get on the ship, as you get off the ship before you go to the restaurants. They really have put into place a lot of measures to make a Norwegian cruise COVID safe. I have cruised with Norwegian Cruise Line and I did have a look into a lot of their itineraries before I made this decision. For me, I decided not to book Norwegian Cruise at this time just because there weren't any itineraries that particularly jumped out at me. And I think there's other cruise lines that have much better technology when it comes to returning to cruising. The prices for Norwegian Cruise Line cruises at the moment are really good and I definitely will cruise with them again. They're fantastic, but there's just some technology on other cruise lines that I wanted to try above Norwegian. They don't have any of this technology that I haven't mentioned yet, but you're going to hear about later in the video. At the moment, Norwegian Cruise Line and none of the cruise lines in this list have made vaccines compulsory for sailing, but a quick side note here because one cruise line has and others may follow. Saga are a relatively small British cruise line and they're the first to make the decision that everybody who cruises with Saga has to be fully vaccinated two weeks before their cruise date. The typical Saga clientele is somebody who's 50 plus and they're British. Here in Britain, we are rolling out our vaccinations pretty fast. So people should be able to cruise with Saga in the summer and be fully vaccinated. Before Saga did this, they did ask their passengers, would they be happy with this? And it was a resounding yes from the majority of the people in their audience. It may be different if you were to survey people who like taking a carnival cruise out of America, only time will tell. I think for Saga though, it does make perfect sense. Coming in at number four, we have got Royal Caribbean who are the largest cruise line by passenger count. If you've never been on a cruise and you imagine a cruise ship, you're probably thinking of a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. They're everywhere and they're very instantly recognizable. They have a whopping 24 ships. Everything that we've mentioned that Norwegian Cruise Line are going to do, Royal Caribbean are also going to do, but Royal Caribbean do have a couple of things that I think puts them a step ahead of Norwegian Cruise Line when it comes to COVID cruising. One thing that definitely can't be ignored is that Royal Caribbean are already sailing. They've already been testing their procedures out. They're currently sailing from Singapore on board Quantum of the Seas, and it is going very well. I think it's going very well. They did have one COVID scare where somebody on board tested positive for coronavirus. All that they did was turn around that ship, head back to the original port, everybody got off. It was later confirmed that that was a false positive. Nobody had a coronavirus on that cruise. But what was good about that is that they've tested everything now. They've tested their procedures for what happens if somebody does get coronavirus and they've proved that it works, which is brilliant. 
If you've ever been on a cruise, you will have done a mustard drill and I'm sure you'll remember it. A mustard drill is basically a safety drill that every cruise ship has to do and everybody has to attend. It is the law, you have to go to the mustard drill. Traditionally, they're either done on the promenade deck or in lounges on the cruise ship and you have thousands of people together in those lounges, which is just not gonna fly in a post-COVID world. It's not gonna work. To fix this problem, Royal Caribbean have announced Muster 2.0, which is the mustard drill but really imagined. It allows people to complete everything they need to do on their phones or their stateroom TV and then all they have to do is check into their muster station so that they know where it is. There really is no need for everybody to be there at the same time just to listen to the same information. I think that this is a great move forward for the industry. The muster drill has always been annoying. I would give anything to be at a muster drill right now but this is going to make it so much better. Royal Caribbean are known for having these big cruise ships with aqua theatres, surf simulators, skydive simulators. You'll find a lot of families and young people on Royal Caribbean cruises. The entertainment is very, very good. It is Broadway style and you will never ever be bored if you cruise with Royal Caribbean. Their ships do vary. A lot of people think that Royal Caribbean only have these huge mega ships, but they also have a lot of smaller ones too. So I really think that Almost everybody can find a cruise with Royal Caribbean if they want to, but in my quest to find the cruise for me and my family, I did not settle on Royal Caribbean, and here is why. The reason why I'm not really considering one is that I do have a Royal Caribbean cruise booked. It's booked for May, and I honestly think there's a 0.001% chance of this cruise happening. There weren't any itineraries that I particularly wanted to do. One thing I'm very hot on at the moment is doing home port cruises. I think if you're gonna cruise soon, you should do it from a home port if you can. Royal Caribbean cruises can also be quite expensive. What I did want to do was lift and shift my cruise that's probably gonna be canceled for May, but they have discontinued that program so I'm expecting to probably just get a refund soon. I will cruise with you again Royal Caribbean but just right now this isn't the cruise for me. Coming in at number three, we have got Viking Cruises. Viking Cruises describe themselves as the thinking people's cruise. Not sure if that means that they think that other people on other cruises don't think. I'm sure it doesn't, but I totally understand. I spent four nights on a Viking cruise and it is all about the thinking. It's all about immersing yourself in culture, learning about the places you're going, eating the food from the places that you're visiting. And it is absolutely amazing. I spent four days on a Viking ocean ship and nothing has lived up to it since. Absolutely amazing. Taking a cruise with Viking, you won't find this kind of crazy nightlife. You won't find a lot of young people on Viking cruises. They do tend to have an older passenger demographic, but all of the ships hold just under a thousand people and there's nothing like the food and the service on a Viking cruise. All of their ships kind of have a Scandinavian vibe. They feel very homely, very comfortable. Every sun lounger has a towel there. You can pick up a bottle of water when you go out. It really is like a next level cruising. Viking have taken the whole COVID safe thing to a new level. They've done something that I don't think any other cruise line has, and they've actually put COVID testing laboratories on their cruise ships. So everybody who's taking a Viking cruise, at least in the short term, is gonna do a COVID test every single day. On a lot of the other cruise lines, you're doing a COVID test before you go or as you embark. But on Viking, they're expecting everybody to do one every single day. It's just gonna be the very simple saliva test, so no problem there. Every day, it will be in your cabin, you'll do the test and hand it off to crew where they will test it on the ship. It's amazing. I've probably spent more time on the Viking website than any other cruise lines website, but there is one massive problem with Viking cruises for me, and that is the price. For this one here, which is around two weeks, you're looking at 5,000 pounds per person starting from, and for me, that's just out of my budget at the moment. I have no doubt that I will cruise with Viking again one day, but it's just not today, so the hunt continues. No COVID safety list would be complete without mentioning the cruise line that has successfully been sailing since last July. It is, of course, one of my favorite cruise lines, MSC. MSC are an Italian cruise line. They're based in Switzerland and they are the fourth largest company in the world. The company MSC is a big shipping company with a cruise line part and they have 7% passenger share, which considering they're actually an independent company is pretty huge. The majority of cruise lines are all owned by the same companies, but MSC, they're off there on their own and they're doing an amazing job. 
MSC currently have two cruise ships sailing and they've got everything that we've mentioned before on board. Not the daily testing, but they've got the social distancing, they've got the masks, they've got everything worked out and it's working incredibly well. I did recently do an interview with some passengers and some crew members who were cruising with MSC and they all said it was incredibly well organized and they felt very safe on board. MSC have been sailing at reduced capacity and it has been working well for them. Nobody who's been on an MSC cruise has really missed out on anything. You can still sit by the pool, you can still have a drink, you can still go to the theatre, but there's just social distancing in place so that some of the seats are left empty. And common sense, things that we're used to in daily life now, just happening on an MSC cruise ship. It isn't just the fact that MSC have already been cruising as to why I put them in this list. They have a huge advantage over almost every other cruise line and that is their MSC for me technology. MSC for me is a wristband that every person wears when they're on an MSC cruise and due to this amazing technology that they have in the ceiling on all of the decks they're able to track every single passenger and work out who has spent time with who. This is key if somebody did test positive for coronavirus they would be able to tell everybody who had spent a certain amount of time within a certain distance of this person that that had happened and it is absolutely genius. I'm sure all the other cruise lines are looking at MSC and wishing that they had that technology. MSC didn't make this to trace people for coronavirus. When they installed this on their cruise ships, they didn't know that this was going to exist, but I bet they're so thankful now that they have this on their ships and it just makes everything so much easier. I know some people say that they don't like the idea of being tagged on a cruise ship. You do have to wear the wristband all of the time. But I personally think that the cruise line knowing how much time of the cruise I spent in the pub is a very small thing for the price of safety. I don't do anything particularly interesting on a cruise. Pub, cabin, buffet, pool, pub, cabin, buffet, pool. If they want to know that, that's fine. MSC are also offering 50% off to NHS workers. That's people who work in our hospitals here in the UK. How nice is that? Very nice. I will just say that there is a big difference between the older MSC ships and the newer ships. The newer ships are just so much bigger and more exciting. Every MSC cruise ship is sparkly, but I much prefer the kind of MSC Meravillia and newer cruise ships. I have cruised on the older ones and it's fine. It just doesn't have that kind of sparkle that I'm used to on the newer MSC ships. If you do take an MSC cruise, you'll find a lot of families on board. There's loads for kids to do. You'll find younger people, you'll find older people too. They have things like ropes courses and water slides on their cruise ships, not just for kids. I've had a go at those too and they're a great amount of fun, but MSE are very much a family cruise line. You'll find people cruising with MSE from all different countries, all different languages being spoken on board. It definitely is amazing, but it's very different to cruising with an American cruise line. If you are interested in those differences, check out this video. The prices of MSC cruises are really good too. So if you're somebody who wants to book a cruise on a real budget, just book an MSC cruise. You don't need to know about number one, just book an MSC cruise and go. Whenever I see a really cheap, really good last minute usually cruise deal, it is normally an MSC cruise. I haven't booked MSC for this cruise though with my family because there's another cruise line that I think takes the technology even further. I have cruised with MSE a couple of times and I do really enjoy them. The ships are loud and sparkly and there's children on board but I'm looking for kind of a more adult relaxing cruise for my next cruise with my family. I'm expecting, 100% expecting there to be a last minute MSE cruise that comes up that I will jump on at last minute but just not this time for this trip. So let's continue. On now to the cruise line that I have booked. I've spent my own money on this. I'm going on the trip with my family so you know that I believe in it. And number one on my list for COVID safe cruise lines is Princess Cruises. You might think that that's a bit of a strange choice but let me explain. I've been on two Princess Cruises before and they're very relaxing. They're very romantic. The food is very good. The service is very good. You're not gonna be bored but also if you want to just chill by one of the many pools on their cruise ships, you can do that. Princess have everything that I'm looking for when it comes to returning to cruising. Princess Cruises are going to do everything that we've mentioned before. There's going to be mask wearing, there's going to be social distancing, but they have taken the technology a step further, even further than MSC, I think, and it's going to help them so much with their return to cruising. So Princess have a technology which is called the Ocean Medallion. It's similar to the MSC for me technology, but the Princess Medallion allows you to do pretty much everything on your cruise completely touchless. You don't have to touch anything on a cruise ever again, which I think is going to be a massive benefit to them. 
The ocean medallion is a tiny little thing. You can wear it as a bracelet, as a necklace, as a pendant, whatever you'd like. And what it does is it allows the crew and everybody to locate everybody else on the cruise. If you're on a cruise with your teenagers or your children and you want to find them, you can have a look on the app and see where they are. I'm, I cruise as a teenager and I quite liked my parents not being able to find me all the time. So not sure how I would feel about that one. But when it comes to this kind of technology, the princess technology is second to none. You can order drinks to yourself, wherever you are on the cruise ship. If you're thirsty, you go on your phone and you order a drink and it finds you. That gets rid of so many touch points of having to hand over your card, get the drink, kind of stand with everybody at the bar. None of that. You sit down at your seat, you're socially distanced, you're away from everybody. You go on your phone and you order a drink that comes to you. It is incredible. You pay for things with the ocean medallion too and it also allows you to get into your cabin without fiddling around with your cruise card it knows when you're outside and the door unlocks and it lets you in it is some serious next level cruising technology and i can't wait to try it out Princess have done a very clever thing and during this downtime for cruising, they fit all of their cruise ships with the medallion technology. So any princess cruise you take in the future will be medallion enabled. And I think that's gonna be a really big selling point for them. They also have things like a contactless boarding so you don't have to see anybody there. And they have a very similar muster drill to Royal Caribbean's that we mentioned earlier, where you complete a muster drill in your cabin and you just check in at your muster station. Again, meaning that you don't have to mix with People, this is the aim of everything. The best COVID safe cruise lines are the ones that allow you to not have to mix with everybody else all of the time. That's pretty much what it comes down to. The cruise that I've booked looks absolutely amazing. I am so happy about it. Not only because I get to try this new technology, which is super cool, but also because I think I'm gonna make some really good memories on here with my family. It's the type of cruise line that everybody in your family can enjoy, regardless of what you like. There's something for you on a princess cruise. I love the entertainment. I love the Zumba, but some people in my family may not like the Zumba. They may prefer eating in the pizza restaurant. But really, whatever you like, there's something on a princess cruise for you. It feels so good to have something to look forward to that I think may actually happen. I decided to book a British Isles cruise and I've done this for August for a number of reasons. One, because I definitely think home port cruises are the way to go. I'm suspecting that we will see some cruises towards the end of summer here in the UK. And if we do, I think British Isles cruises will be one of the first ones to happen. It makes sense. A British Isles cruise, probably with only British people, could happen. So I'm hedging my bets on this one. If it does happen, I will be chuffed to bits. Chuffed to bits is your Britishism of the week. Chuffed to bits just means really happy and everybody in Britain uses chuffed or chuffed to bits. It's not one of these phrases that we don't use. So you could say I'm absolutely chuffed to bits with this choice just to have something to look forward to that I feel may happen. I don't think you can undervalue that, the power of having something to look forward to. Picking a cruise involves a lot of planning. You've put a lot of your time and energy into this. The last thing you want is to spend a single second on board worried or stressed. Watch this video next to learn how I avoid being stressed on any of my cruises. Very easy things you can do, but things that people frequently forget. And it upsets me so much when I see people making these mistakes. So watch this one next.